It's lovely and peaceful, nice and quiet, and daylight today, what, what more can be better? I've been coming down here every day practically for the best part of two years now. Feeling the uh, swans. Only this morning did I see the baby heron for the first time, just along there. They, obviously, uh, I don't go along that far, and the bridge is as far as I go. It would be great to be able to get along on the canal path. Getting access to nature is one of the best things for improving your well-being. And the great thing about the canal is that it's one of the easiest places to come to um, to get access to nature in a very hilly and quite difficult place to live if you've got any kind of mobility issues. The reason for Phase 1B is to connect this canal to the rest of 2,500 miles of Inland Waterway. It stops four miles short at the moment. If we attach it and uh, restore it all the way to Saul, that will enable boats to come from the rest of the country to here. And if we don't get it, they won't be able to do that. Without this connection to the Inland Waterways, I'm afraid the work being done already, the investment, is going to be very difficult to maintain without the income from the boats, which is the main thing we want. Redeveloping the canal from um, Stonehouse to Saul for us as a town and as, as a community, it just brings an extra boost of energy and, and life and excitement into the town. You just have to look at what's happened already with the pieces of canal that have been restored down by Ebley Mill, for example. There are uh, flats and shops uh, down there, and you know you can see what happens when, when the canal goes through. The canal project is so exciting and so ambitious and well loved in this area but it, it has a really important uh, function as well of improving the route down the canal for jobs and businesses. I think it would make a really massive impact in lots of ways really. We could see like an upturn in business for people passing by and we have land right adjacent to the canal which we'd probably look to do in a glamping field. We own a, a piece of land where a big chunk of the canal is going to go through. We're going to create a 4,000 uh, green job business park, all wooden football stadium. We want to create a new wetland area, which will be really important for biodiversity. And we're here to make it happen. I think the benefits of the new link and the next phase of the canal development project are of enormous benefit to Stonehouse Court Hotel and the, the larger business community, bringing new job creation and jobs for young people. With an ageing population in, in Gloucestershire, it's really important that we keep those young people here in, in Gloucestershire. 30% of people in Stroud commute out of the district to go to work. Uh, so from a sustainability point of view, that's all kinds of wrong. We need to create jobs here so that people can work here. We know there's going to be job losses with uh, post-COVID. Um, we've got a, a perfect, perfect project where the whole of the district can get involved, learn new skills, get youngsters involved while they're not necessarily going to get jobs in the next months and years. But that heritage money is the thing that will bring it all together. From my point of view, I'm trying to help people build the confidence to return to work. So all those things that we think of as soft skills, turning up on time, communication with your manager, working with the team, are all things that they find sometimes quite hard to do. So volunteering, giving them the chance to do something, try something new is, is really a great opportunity. Um, I think it's really important to be able to kind of get that experience and like learn a new skill and be able to kind of communicate with people on a different level, so I think it's very important. So we have special needs youngsters who come and to see them blossom over the, the years that they come, it's absolutely fantastic. We get unemployed people, we get retired and semi-retired people and they start off as strangers and they become friends. The project, I think, literally couldn't go ahead without volunteers. They are the workforce. Outside of the regular volunteering, we do scout groups where we will focus on a site and get a lot of scouts or, or school kids on, on one site doing, uh, doing great stuff. I view that as the next generation of volunteers. We live for the canals. We, we live on a boat and uh, just to put something back into the canals is, is absolutely fantastic. And it's a real hub here. And we meet a huge diversity of people. We've noticed, especially since the pandemic, the number of people that are now visiting the canals for the first time. It's been proven it's incredibly good for mental health to be out and about. Craig had a lot of anxiety about going out and, and trying new activities. So he came along, he did two uh, events with us where he basically ran the barbecue for us. Ben me quite a lot actually, helping people out, things that I weren't quite good at. 
They had all their boats out and everything, so I got to know the people there. Got a bit of a friendship, saying hello every time we go past. It's helped me was to get off the alcohol and have more confidence in myself and think of other things instead of the drink. Being able to come and be at the canal and, and for it to be a safe space is very important for all kinds of people. Um, whether you are recovering from an addiction or whether you've got a, you're living with a mental health issue or any kind of health issue, the, the peace and serenity that comes from being by the canal is really important. The biodiversity net gain is something the government's really big on at the moment and it looks like that's going to be compulsory for all development as part of the Environment Bill when it's enacted. I think the government is suggesting it's going to be around 10% they're looking for developers to do and we're hoping ours would be much more around 30 or 40%, so a real uptake in biodiversity. And what that really means is we should get more species here, we should attract more wildlife, it should hold more and it should be much better for the local people in terms of you know the habitats they've got on their doorsteps. Building Nature accreditation is it's a set of standards. It's a way of saying that a development has really taken into account the natural environment. So have you thought about wildlife in how you've designed a development? Have you thought about how people are gonna enjoy that natural green space? Quite a lot has been done at the design stage to make sure that the restored canal offers the best opportunity that's really practicable for the environment. We're trying to avoid hard engineering where we can. We've got European eel used the uh, frame already, they're an internationally uh, protected species. Now we've got an obligation to ensure eel passage on the canal. By working with the engineer team, they've actually come up with a novel uh, design solution where we're actually fitting an eel pass as standard in a, a submerged culvert. And they're really proud of the fact that they've come up with this design solution. Main complexities are the bridges. We, we, we've got uh, three major bridges. We've got the rail bridge, uh, we've got the A38 roundabout, which is actually currently going on now. We've got another public road bridge as well. That takes up something like two-thirds of the total cost of this project. A development like this will, will bring in no end of benefit, economic and well-being and all that kind of stuff. So to me, it's, it's crucial and it's really important that we get the funding from the Heritage Lottery Fund. The canal project has a very large element of participation and inclusion in it and we've designed what we're calling a Pathways to Participation programme and that involves supporting everybody in whatever way they need support to take part. Boat mobility is a facility for absolutely anybody in the community who wants to get out on the water. So we take people with disabilities, take people with dementia, we take people who just want to get out on the water, maybe, you know, for their well-being. And we also have the wheelie boat, which takes wheelchairs. Quite a lot of what we do at Access Bike is go on bike rides to actually put our bikes to the test once we've learned how to fix them up. We can avoid all roads, we can take groups of people, young and old, out on bike rides and feel safe as well as being able to ride on a beautiful canal, see some wildlife. It's just a perfect spot where we are here. We do a lot of mentoring, like one-to-one -one mentoring, and a good example of this is a, a young person that lives in Stonehouse, um, has built themselves up with confidence and skills to be able to ride independently down to Access Bike all the way along the canal, something that was a, a massive step when we first sort of said that as maybe an idea. And I think if we can open that out to a number of other small towns and villages along the canal, it would be incredible. I live by the canal. Uh, so I see a lot of what's going on in terms of fishing, canoes, paddle boarding. It's just all part of our community here. It's absolutely critical that the community are fully engaged with this process so that they recognise the opportunities on an environmental, economic and social level. Just a peaceful, calm place to be. There's so many birds and insects, people to meet. The kids love watching the volunteers. I was telling him about the plan to get the canal all the way out to the M5 and connect it up to other canals and he said that's a good idea and I said you can raise we were talking about raising money for charities and how people do it and I said you can make things people will buy and he was like I'm gonna make something I said what do you want to make he said I'll draw some pictures I think I put it on Facebook and loads of my friends and family just said we'll buy a picture and then we just got more and more money probably about 10,000 <laughs>
<laughs> We're going to be working with all the schools to develop and embed a local canal curriculum. The, the stories that are emerging from the archive have never been known before. It's so important to actually unlock that archive and get it out there so that the community and the public can actually investigate how this canal came about, why it came about, and who are the people that actually built it. It's been uh, fascinating to learn the local history and to understand about, about the woolen mills and how the canal was used and how it was originally connected to, uh, to the to Saul and how it was connected to the River Thames. We've got communities um, wanting to be educated and learn about the canal. The history of canals and the people who use them, art has been quite a, it's quite a sort of characteristic. We've got various sorts of art here, which um, has accumulated over the years. We've got school murals that have been community engagement projects. Some of it has been commissioned from professional artists. I was born and raised in Stroud. So yeah, when the opportunity came to create an artwork in, in Stroud, I jumped for it. It won't just be an artwork for me to um, sort of express myself. It'll be an opportunity for other people to be creative. And for me, that's when things get really exciting because you're never entirely sure, you know, what the outcome's going to be. Very recently, um, one of the mills alongside the canal commissioned a lovely mural, which I believe is a great asset. It wouldn't be there if it weren't for the fact that the canal was being restored. We were offered the wall by Zach from Studio 18 um, and he gave us permission to come and paint here. I think for me it's like re-engineering the use of the space. I think we've had like a, a really good response from people coming past. There are so many artists and so many people who need to be creative. It's what we need to sort of stay sane. And there aren't enough galleries and museums to be able to place their work and to present their work. So the public domain is a useful location for that. You know, if we were able to put more sites where we could paint along the canal, I think it'd be great because it would almost sort of turn it into like a trail in a way, if you see what I mean, because obviously it's linear. So if there were kind of more spots further down the line, then it'd almost become like a journey, wouldn't it? The creation of this link to connect the already, you know, uh, developed phase 1A with the Gloucester and Sharpness to canals would create a fantastic destination that will now be accessible to boaters right across the English canal system and it will be such an exciting prospect for people to come and enjoy this new section of canal, to go into the beautiful countryside around Stroud and to visit that sort of destination. I'm sure it will be a great draw for people. And so we are lending our support both financially and a contribution to the project, but also in making sure that we provide whatever other professional uh, support we can to make the whole project and join up uh, effectively and to deliver all the benefits that we, we know are a key part of this project for everyone living in the communities that will be touched by it. To the Heritage Lottery Fund I would say please support this bid because without it it will take our dedicated volunteers decades to complete the task so it really is now or never and there's a huge amount of benefit from this project being completed. It'll capitalise on the work that's already been done. It's great for wildlife, for nature, it's good for the community, it helps support health and well-being, it'll bring visitors to the town, it'll boost our tourism, it'll support our uh, shops and traders in the town centre. It really does everything. People understand the National Lottery in terms of it being um, a fund for the community. It's paid for through people's contributions to buying their lottery ticket. I think there's a nice feeling with the canal that this is really owned by the people of Stroud. It's our canal, people are very proud of it and that being proved by their contributions is an important thing in terms of it being owned by everybody. If it's not to be done, it's going to be some of our heritage what we lose. We, we just can't let it go, can we?